this uh, motive mass of the sacred heart of Jesus. The epistle is from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Brethren, to me, the least of all the saints is given this grace to preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to enlighten all men that they may see what is the dispensation of the mystery which hath been hidden from eternity in God who created all things that a manifold wisdom of God may be made known to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places through the church according to the eternal purpose which he made in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have boldness and access of confidence by the faith of him. For this cause I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom all paternity in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened by his spirit with might unto the inward man, that Christ may dwell by faith in your hearts, it being rooted and grounded in charity, you may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, to know also the charity of Christ which surpasseth all knowledge, that you may be filled unto all the fullness of God. Continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. <clears throat> At that time, the Jews, because it was a parashave, that the bodies might not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that was a great Sabbath day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken, that they might be taken away. The soldiers therefore came, and they broke the legs of the first, and of the other that was crucified with him. But after they were come to Jesus, when they saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spirit opened his side, and immediately there came out blood and water. And he that saw it hath given testimony, and his testimony is true. And he knoweth that he saith truth, true, that you may believe. For these things were done that the scripture might be fulfilled, you shall not break a bone of him. And again another scripture saith, They shall look on him whom they have pierced. This are the words of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. The name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the uh, intention of this Mass, of course, is for the uh, conversion of uh, all those who are indulge in uh, or promote occult practices, that is, practices that involve uh, asking uh, unseen spirits, who are going to be demons, by the way, um, asking them to do things for you. And uh, for, their, uh, for their conversion and also for the protection of anybody who foolishly gets led into these things out of curiosity or whatever else. Reparation. This is a mass for reparation, which is why there was no Gloria in, even though it's a Sacred Heart mass, uh, that's why we don't have that. Uh, and it be, reparation is making up in ourselves some of the suffering due to the whole Christ, the whole Christ, for sins of ourselves and also the sins of others. And this could be a reparation for things done by entire societies or by individuals. A lot of reparation was done when the Pachamama ended up on the altar at St. Peter's and um, uh, other things that happen that really are not right you have to do more and more reparation all the time. We're making it up to God 
and uh, God's justice has to be satisfied. Now making up the sins of, of the whole cross or the sufferings due to the whole uh, Christ means to the whole mystical body, the church. So when St. Paul is talking about this, and, and it sounds like he's saying that, well, Jesus' sacrifice wasn't enough. And of course, he's absolutely not saying that at all uh, in a couple of different places where he talks about this. But he's saying that you know, once we're baptized, we are part of the body of Christ, the whole body of Christ. And for that reason, the whole body has to do its part like its master. It has to suffer and in some way die uh, for because of sin. So Christians have a, both a duty and a privilege of reparation. <clears throat> Father Raoul Puss, a um, uh, Jesuit in France in the uh, 19... 20s he was writing I think he gives three reasons why we should want to do uh, reparation we should want to have sufferings in our lives um, now I, before I get into this uh, I was talking with a friend in the Charlotte area uh, this morning he said he'd said, made a remark on Facebook about how we you know, Christians need to suffer. We need to suffer. And some woman responded back uh, who apparently didn't get it uh, and said, you are a masochistic idiot. And, and when this guy told me that, I said, I know you. You are not masochistic. And I left it at that. And I, so I, may get, I may get letters to that, but I don't go on Facebook, so I'm not worried about it. Um, but the people don't understand it now, but sufferings are for our benefit. They're allowed for our benefit that we would grow in our reliance on God. There are no atheists in foxholes, as they say, and it goes even deeper than that. So Father Plus gives three reasons. First off is self-interest. Uh, that some repair of the damage has to be made to our relationship with God caused by our own sins. Even though they're forgiven in confession, nonetheless there is a strained relationship because of sin. And uh, there's also that matter of temporal punishment that uh, if we don't do it in this world, then we're going to do it in the next. So um, uh, that's the second part of this, to do temporal punishments, do us for sins now rather than in purgatory. Thirdly, it helps train us to say no to our self-will. To the extent that we can say no to ourselves, we are able to say yes to God, to God's will. Just like he who makes a friend of the world, as scripture says, makes an enemy of God, so he considers a, he who considers attachments to the world as his enemy is on the way to making friends with God. Secondly, as victims, uh, we must uh, learn and experience uh, and, God, and exercise God's type of love, that self-giving, sacrificial love that is without limit. Again, to counter poise in the dignities and sins against the Lord. Uh, for instance, the occult convention that's happening the next two days uh, in Colombia. And uh, also to uh, lost my place here uh, and a, the, I should mention the occult this would be the sin of idolatry occultism is idolatry because you're giving you're taking to lesser creatures what should if, if taken at all be taken to God the quest for our for true happiness 
in humility and in justice. We should be turning to God, not to these other things. Uh, and most times when these other things seem to be benevolent spirits, in fact, most times, yeah, uh, they aren't. So, uh, you know, uh, a word to the wise. So, uh, secondly, we need to be victims to appease God's just wrath for our own sins and especially as an act of love for the sins of others. This is modeled after uh, the vicarious atonement, as it's called, of Jesus Christ. His uh, sacrifice of his life, his whole life was a sacrifice, but it's a, he takes our place suffering the type of stuff that we should be suffering uh, for all of our sins, collectively and individually. Uh, so it's an act of love, especially for our suffering uh, for souls in purgatory, uh, can assist now in, uh, in reducing the temporal punishment due to those souls in purgatory. And thirdly, let's not forget, most importantly, reparation is an imitation of Christ himself. He set the pattern with a generous Christian life. Father Pluse says, quote, Jesus lived his whole life upon earth as a victim that he might give us an example and teach us to suffer. So, well, gee, he wasn't a victim during his whole life. He was uh, with his family and that was a happy time and blah, blah, blah. Uh, he's God. He's God living among uh, his creatures, not just creatures who are lower than him by one rung, but by two rungs because the angels are, are higher than we are in the order of being. Uh, gee, uh, so... To mention one instance, to atone for men's pride is given as a reason why Jesus lived a hidden life of painful toil. Uh, he's making reparation uh, for those who uh, uh, pursued vain things and for those who are indifferent, those who are indifferent. That whole hidden life, as it's called, can be explained that way. That Jesus is being humble and unknown, where he could have been, a, a, so to speak, a rock star to make reparation. Jesus asks reparation of us throughout the Gospels and also through private revelations. Uh, for instance, to St. Margaret Mary, who's up in that picture up there. Uh, regarding the Sacred Heart, make reparation to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. So how should reparation be made? Number one, obviously not begrudgingly, not begrudging the time or the effort, but with thankfulness for the opportunity to join our Master in suffering for the whole Christ. Key in this is not feelings, but a movement of will, a movement, a choice of will. That's, that's the uh, center, for instance, of love itself. It's a choice of will. It's not about the feelings. Get married to somebody, love them to death, but the feelings can be one day you can really be put out with them, and the next day you can feel real sentimental about them. So uh, it's the act of will that counts. Sorrow for the sins of mankind, confidence in God's mercy, and performing acts of reparation, and accepting adversities that God at least permits to come to us. And of course, voluntarily taking up penances and mortifications as satisfaction for the sins of ourselves and of the world. The modern world does not understand this. And I think, let me just put it this way, I think those who assist at the traditional mass are in a better position 
to understand it because it's more clearly a sacrifice that we are joining our Lord in, in uh, accomplishing at every Mass. Purposely willing uh, to join our sufferings uh, to Christ for the glory of the Father in heaven is like trophies for the Father to the power of his love to overcome our selfishness. We should be doing this all year. We should have a spirit of reparation as a constant part of our outlook and our disposition in life. In all the little duties of our states in life, we don't have to do grandiose things. We need to have that kind of attitude that we've got a responsibility to help carry the burden of suffering that the church, the rest of the body of Christ, uh, uh, carries. It's a bigger responsibility because so many people don't accept it. They don't believe it. And it's, I'm not saying that to blame people who don't, but simply that there's a misunderstanding that needs to be corrected and will be corrected and by events probably soon enough. So we should develop that. Uh, <clears throat> the la Holy Sacrifice of the Mass <coughs> is a continuation of Jesus' atonement for the human race. And we, therefore, should consciously join our wills to his at Mass and also outside of Mass, assisting not only as recipients of his grace, but as co-victims in the satisfaction he makes to God for all the sins of the world. There is a, there is a uh, universal uh, dimension to come into Mass, the simple act of coming to Mass, it goes far beyond the individuals and the people, the, the whole group. It goes to our responsibility to be praying for all the people, all of us sinners around the world, be praying for the end to things that are abominations in the sight of God, and to be uh, praying for a greater spirit of holiness among all peoples. Father Plus gives one example which I'll close with. There was a young girl in the time of the French Revolution, Marguerite de, de Pons. She was asked by a judge of the Revolutionary Tribunal, what are your religious views? She answered simply, I love God with all my heart. Reparation is a great part of that, and that should be good enough for us too. May God bless you. In the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And brothers and sisters, uh, the only announcement I'll make is do not feel like this um, reparation mass is a failure. I think most of you know well enough that the mass, if it were just being said by me in my living room, it would have a good effect um, for this, these intentions. And I hope that God will bless all of us uh, for doing this effort, even though we know a lot of people are out of town or just otherwise couldn't make it. So don't be discouraged by that. The Lord's the one we need to impress.